Another area we worked on is um, encrypted and signed emails. The, in this case, uh, on the left-hand side, we have a public and private CA. The key vault becomes important, um, and then we have certificate manager. The key vault is important because if, uh, if the users are left to their own devices to uh, archive their keys, one or two things happens. One is they'll put that key on a USB stick or in their hard drive. They'll put it in a USB stick. They'll put it with other files. They'll give it to somebody with transferring files. Now their key is out in the wilds, which is not very good a big security risk. Um, the other thing that can happen is that the employee forgets the archive the key. They do, let's say, two years of emails and, or file, encrypting files, and they've, now that they've actually destroyed their key, they go to decrypt those files and realize they forgot to archive the key, and now they can't retrieve those files. So by doing that for the employee automatically, as part of the issuance of the certificates, it protects that type of scenario from causing problems uh, to the enterprise. Uh, another use case might be that the person left the company and they want the manager wants to check and find some emails, emails that were encrypted. They will decrypt them, but the employee destroyed the key as part of leaving the company. One of the challenges with S mine has always been to get the keys to everywhere it needs to be, and it's compounded with the more modern day scenarios where you, the employee has a tablet, perhaps have a mobile device. Now you've got your Windows desktop. You have three places to get that key. They all have to be synchronized and updated at the same time, or else you can't decrypt or you can't encrypt. So what we do is we automate that entire process. So we get the key into the key vault as part of the enrollment process. We get the key to the directory, and that's important because if people want to encrypt for you, they have to be able to find your certificate. If it's not in the directory, then they can't encrypt for you, um, and it'll become unusable. You need to get into the mobile uh, devices and the tablets and the, and the, and the phones and in Outlook. Um, and as well, you need to get those certificates sometimes to recipients or outside your enterprise, or perhaps an email gateway that wants to decrypt that email so it can do a content scan to look for spam or malware on incoming and outgoing, or data loss prevention for emails leaving the company. So the real key to what we're doing is trying to get that identity and synchronized into all the places it needs to be automatically without any user intervention. We really do that in one of two ways. Um, we work collaborate with MDM vendors, so if it's a mobile device, we use, uh, for example, Intune would be a good example, where a certificate manager will talk to Intune from Microsoft, and then Intune gets that certificate to the uh, tablet, uh, to the mobile device, and in some cases, actually to Windows desktop as well. And then it, in turn, uses that key with Outlook um, OBA or Outlook desktop to do the actual encryption, decryption, and signing operations. In some cases, there is no MDM. So in that case, we use the native capabilities of the operating system. Each operating system, both Android and iOS, have a way for us to get certificates to those devices, the mobile devices, without any user intervention. And that's true for the initial installation, but it's also true for when it comes to time for renewal. So we, we handle all that automatically with an MDM or without an MDM, but in both cases, it's fully automated. In some cases, for Windows Desktop, we also have the Microsoft, a Microsoft integration where we can get the certificates to Windows Desktop in a fully automated manner. Now, these certificates in this case, I've just talked about SMIME as the application, but for those mobile devices, that certificate could also be used for other use cases. And two popular use cases would be replacing the Wi-Fi password so imagine a case where you, you have a mobile device that wants to connect to the company's Wi-Fi uh, network on the, uh, on the, uh, inter, in the, I guess, the internet, inter, intranet side of the connection, not on the internet side. And, of course, you really want employees to have access to that um, Wi-Fi network. So you could do that by you know, giving them passwords, but if someone leaves the company, they have to change that password. <laughs> because you don't want that person to still have access. It gets very convoluted after a while. By using certificates, it, 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 if the person leaves the company, you just revoke the certificate. There's no reason to change anything. And that certificate gets to the mobile device in the same way we did it for S5, on the same MDM or non-MDM approach. Or perhaps you want to authenticate to a website um, from your Safari or your, uh, your web browser on your mobile device the same certificates can be used for that as well. So there's other use case been then just as much. Now we've, most of our vendors, or competitors, sorry, um, they all have a way of doing this, but it requires human intervention. They give you a P12 file, which is a key and a certificate in a file. And basically it's the employee's job to get that certificate to its rightful destination. We offer that as well as an alternative, 
But we have found that customers, when they try to deploy that, they end up finding that it's just too much support costs. They have to, people get tripped up in the installation process or they installed it, but then they renewed it and they forgot to install it somewhere else. And so we, we usually find customers come back and they ask for the zero touch if they tried to do it without zero touch to begin with.